Hello, I'm Dave Dietrich, and welcome to this ITM video about the IBM program machine. In fact, this was the first program machine that IBM developed in the early 1900s, and it was based around a master clock. Let's take a closer look at the history, as well as the operations of the IBM program machine. The first patent for an electrical program clock was issued in 1889 to a Scotsman by the name of John McCaskey in Waynesboro High School. His invention allowed his school to program classroom bells to ring at a set time by placing pins on a plate that spun based upon the movement of the clock. When the pins made contact with wires, they'd ring the classroom bells throughout the school. McCaskey's invention evolved into the Frick and later Landis clock companies, which used drums which rotated to connect pins to their circuits and ring classroom bells at pre-programmed times. Day, hour, and minute would be programmed by putting pins in the drums, which would make contact to the feelers and ring the bells. Hansen and other companies developed similar systems with limited success. The first widely used program machine were paper tape systems, like on the standard electric. It fed a 12 or 24 hour tape through the program machine until feelers made contacts to ring the bells. But in the early industrial age, businesses were booming and they needed a more robust solution. Business owners recognized IBM as a leader in the punch time clock and time recording business. In the early 1920s, IBM started adding punch paper tapes to their master clock series. This clock from the early 1930s was a technological marvel installed in the Philadelphia School District. But then in the 1930s, IBM brought out what would become the industry standard program machine. Each program machine was configured to meet the needs of the school or business that was buying it. State of the art in its day, today they remain beautiful works of art. Let's take a closer look. I've wired red LEDs into this master clock to show where a circuit is energized once a minute. At the top of every minute, a set of contacts is closed to energize the red circuit. There are two blades that ride on the top of the cam, and the back blade falls, closing the contact, and then the front blade falls, opening the contact. The closing of the contacts energize the movement winding coil at the bottom of the movement, pulling the subassembly over and winding one minute's worth. The closing of the contacts also energize the relay in the upper right, which is connected to slave clocks throughout the building. Once a minute, a pulse from the master clock energizes the slave clock, advancing the minute hand. The minute contacts in the movement would also energize the coils in the program machine so that it would advance one minute. When the coils are energized, they pull the assembly over and the pole winds the program machine one minute's worth. The disc spins every six hours, so every point on the disc represents two times, such as eight o'clock or two o'clock. Above the time disc is the day of the week discs. The day of the week discs spin once every six hours, so each day is broken up into four time zones. The user would insert pins in the time and the day that they wanted to have the circuit closed or the program set. As the pins would ride underneath fingers, the fingers would close or open contacts to ring the bells or turn them off. Inside the movement, there's a second set of contacts which close and open about four seconds behind the primary contacts. When that delayed set of contacts close and the program machine is set to close, then we have a completed circuit. I've wired in blue LEDs where the primary bell circuits would be turned on. The program machine activates the three relays in the blue circuit on the bottom. These relays allow the user to attach different voltage bells to the master clock under program control. LEDs are also wired into the top of the clock where the bells would be attached.
This hardware configuration and program are set up to accommodate a secondary set of bells, which I've indicated with green LEDs wired in. You can see that the green circuit stays activated much longer than the blue circuit did. With its own green circuit relay, a different type of device could be wired in as well, such as a factory horn. The key to the green circuit is the duration timer, which allows the user to adjust how long they want to have the bell or horn be activated. When the coil of the duration timer is energized, it pulls the metal bar over. That metal bar also is connected to a spring underneath the coil, which slowly pulls the bar back away from the coil after it's been released. When the coil is energized, the bar gets pulled in, and an armature reaches into the gear train and then slowly pulls the gear train and gives it uh, the energy that it needs to simulate a clock movement. Also, when the bar gets pulled over, a set of contacts are closed, which remain closed until the bar swings back far enough to open them up. A small escape wheel at the top of the duration timer allows for the timing of the duration. And a small pendulum on the front of the duration timer allows for the control and the rate of spin of the escape wheel. You can press the wind key on, found on most clocks to activate the minute or red circuit in our case. To set the time on the program machine, first release the paw by pushing it back and tucking it up out of the way. That allows the drum to spin freely. Align the time underneath the finger and then release the pole to re-engage the drum. To set the day and the time zone, release the wheel and turn until the appropriate time zone is aligned with the finger. To change the duration of the duration timer, you can adjust the mini pendulum by sliding the weight up or down. With the weight of the mini pendulum in the lower position, the escape wheel spins slower, and as a result of that, the bells stay ringing for a much longer time. You can operate each one of the bell circuits individually by pressing the button on the bottom of the case. Or you can switch off any one of the bell circuits. The pulse from the master clock moves a magnet inside the slave clock that when released, it moves the hands forward. The next generation of IBM's program machine used less expensive alloys and 24 volt. Standard Electric brought out their new program machine but found limited success. IBM even made factory horns and bells and other accessories for the time clocks that they manufacture. Thanks for watching our video about the IBM program machine. Hope you learned something, hope you found it entertaining, hope you check out our other videos on YouTube. Thanks for watching.